And finally, the, the final question I have uh, is uh, issue number uh, 26, which deals with the, the, the question of uh, non-denominational schools. Again, uh, I, I thank the delegation for the information it provided us, uh, our committee. Uh, the information provided is encouraging at some level in the sense that it acknowledges the need to reform the current system. But again, we remain concerned about the pace of the changes that are being introduced. The number of non-denominational schools in Ireland is still minuscule. And it is an understanding that most of the new schools that have been opened have been uh, multi-denominational and not non-denominational. Uh, it is also under understanding that there are no current plans to create non-denominational schools by way of transfer of control. Uh, in those areas where uh, it has been deemed, following the recommendations of the Forum on Patronage and Pluralism in the Primary Sector, that there is no sufficient demand for such education. Uh, could you please explain to the committee how the, idea, how the notion of, uh, of insufficient demand, uh, how the notion of insufficient demand would justify, uh, would not justify the establishment of non-denominational primary schools, uh, and what would be the fate of parents and children in, in those areas, uh, in the no demand areas, what would be their fate in terms of access to non-denominational education. This also goes to, uh, to non-surveyed uh, parents living in rural areas where there is also uh, a likelihood of uh, limited numbers of uh, parents uh, and children uh, who would uh, demand, according to these standards, non-denominational education. Uh, is, it true that even under the new, is it true that even under the new draft general scheme bill, children uh, of families, uh, uh, non-Christian families or atheist families would be dis may be discriminated against, against in admission to denominational schools if they do not fit with its ethos, provided that preference to the, to the school's denomination children is stated in, explicitly in the admission policies of that school. Uh, and going forward, how is the state party planning to deal with the possibility and demand for, for uh, non-denominational education uh, in the future? Uh, is it considering a move away from, from the integrated curriculum provided by Rule 68 of the Rules for National Schools? Is it considering a significant rise in the number of schools transferred into public hands? Uh, my follow-up question goes to the issue of, the no uh, of the no uh, de denominational education. And, and I note the statement on improvements that are planned in the transparency of school admission policies. My two follow-up questions in this regard is, uh, how does the delegation explain the compatibility with the covenant of a state of affairs uh, that allows private schools, which have a near monopoly in Ireland on a vital public service, to openly discriminate in admission policies between children on the basis of their parents' religious convictions? I would appreciate whether in orally or in writing the, the, the delegation theory on this point, on this legal point and whether the state believes or not that it is required to ensure a neutral studying environment in those schools, in denominational schools, outside the confines of uh, religious instruction classes uh, that can be opted out from. Thank you very much.